Hi everybody, Norman from hisnibs.com here. Um, in this video, I'm going to take a look at my first Hongdian pen from China. And uh, this is the N7. And it's actually uh, on some sites called the Gray Rabbit. And there's a reason for that. There are rabbits everywhere on the cap, and I'll show close-ups a bit later. And the very top is a bunny rabbit. And uh, Although my first Hongdian pen, I really think this was an homage to me. Uh, N7, Norman, I mean, that's pretty obvious. But more so, uh, my last name, Haas, it means hare or, well, <laughs> used to mean hare, or rabbit in uh, German. Actually, in Germany, it would be pronounced Hase, uh, much like uh, Porsche. And I'm going to see if I can sell this Hongdian for Porsche. No, I, I kid. Uh, the... Actually, on the back it says month rabbit, so it's celebrating the, in the Chinese horoscope, the month of the rabbit, or as we now know, month of the Haas. Before I get into the Hongdian pen, though, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm perceiving as the state of Chinese pens, which is very good. Uh, I started importing Hero initially. 25 years ago, and I was responsible for introducing a number of other Chinese brands uh, to the States uh, early on, such as uh, Duke, Jinhao, Uranus, uh, a number of them. And especially with Hero in the beginning, uh, several years, I was constantly emailing back and forth of them giving them suggestions about how they could improve the quality of their pens. And Hero, even back then, had a sub-brand called Doctor, which was their higher-end pens. And they had a number of really well-made and, and nice ones. But the basic Hero model, of which countless millions upon millions were manufactured, in fact, my wife, uh, who grew up in Hong Kong, used a, a, um, a Hero 329 growing up in, in grammar school, which was uh, an homage to the Parker 51. Um, those millions were functional. They worked well. They, proved, they uh, did the job that they were intended to do. But um, quality and fit and finish were not a, a major concern for them. And I've really been impressed the last couple of years about how far uh, Chinese fountain pen manufacturer has come. There's a lot of innovation now. And the fit and finish is really up to Western standards and, in, and better than many Western pen companies, in my opinion. Um, last month, or the last video I did, was on the new Asvine uh, raindrop overlay um, 169V pen, which I've been using it's for the last month or so. It's really a gorgeous pen. Very, very well made and a terrific writer. The quality of the nib right out of the box was impressive to me. And uh, I'll link below to that video where I detail a little bit more about this gorgeous pen. But the quality and the fit and finish is what I've been hoping for for the last quarter century dealing with uh, Chinese pens and importing them in large quantities over those years. 
I haven't used the Hongnian yet, but already I'm very impressed. And especially at the price point, it's, it's kind of ridiculous when you compare it to what a lot of Western pen manufacturers are charging for a comparable pen. Is uh, I'm just, you know, the this is a piston fill ink view window. You can see the piston action there. And although I'm told that this may vary by model as far as the feeds are concerned, uh, a lot of them are the ubiquitous plastic feeds that every manufacturer has gone to in the last 15 or 20 years uh, because they're so easy to produce and uh, manufacture and are inexpensive to do so, relatively speaking. This has an ebonite feed and apparently a number of the Hongdian pens come with ebonite feeds. Now many collectors have never experienced an ebonite feed as opposed to a plastic one. And the major difference is ink flow. Um, the plastic feeds that we're so used to can sometimes uh, Im actually impede ink flow, whereas uh, ebonite has always been uh, the preferred material for creating free-flowing and consistent feed on a fountain pen. So um, I'm really looking forward to filling this up and, and using it, the Oz pen. It looks like Chinese fountain pens, not all brands, of course, but many of the brands, such as Asfine and and Hongdian, from what I've heard, have really equaled the quality and for a less expensive price of the majority of uh, Western pen manufacturers. And that's a little concerning for them, uh, maybe more than a little concerning for them, considering the many hundreds of dollars that premium fountain pen manufacturers often charge and comparing in many ways to a pen that's, I think this is somewhere around $20, $30. Um, and I only see the Chinese pen manufacturers getting even better at this with, uh, with design and uh, their manufacturing processes. Assuming, of course, that we still will have uh, the ability to import pens from China. Uh, with the uh, political situation with, uh, with mainland now, I don't know how long that's going to last. So maybe it won't be an issue going forward for Western pen makers. But it's something that uh, I'm going to keep a watch on. So let's get... Uh, looking at the pen itself. Howsoever, before we get to the fountain pen, it's obvious that we have to talk about Jimmy Stewart. Well, obvious to me. Uh, Jimmy Stewart is my favorite classic Hollywood actor. And 30s, 40s, 50s, even into the, the 60s. And uh, for those of you who don't know him, great classic films such as uh, Oh, Rear Window with Alfred Hitchcock, uh, The Philadelphia Story for which he won an Oscar, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. His uh, personal favorite film and many, many, many people's personal favorite of his was um, It's a Wonderful Life, which is shown usually at every Christmas uh, and Thanksgiving season around country. But the one I want to talk about is Harvey, because it relates to pauses, to rabbits, or in his terms, 
in his term in the movie, pukas, which are often uh, spiritual animals that are invisible. And in his case, that was a six foot invisible rabbit named Harvey. And uh, let me switch camera angles for this next. So the Jimmy Stewart Museum uh, is actually here in Pennsylvania, in Indiana, Pennsylvania, which was his hometown. And uh, been there a couple times actually. It's in the western part of the state, uh, somewhat near Pittsburgh. And this is one of the purchases I made. This uh, pen, very generic ballpoint, saying uh, the Jimmy Stewart Museum, Indiana, Pennsylvania. Never actually used that because, well, it's a ballpoint for God's sakes. Also got this mug, and I'm sure this is all very fascinating to you. And hold on a second while I turn on the stove. Okay. Uh, and you know it's a it's a nice mug. Nothing really to write home about. And uh, the other side, for some reason, is just a. A scene with a street light. Um, I think maybe I would have to go back and see the movie. I think perhaps he first encounters Harvey standing at a street light. Uh, that would make sense as the tea kettle boils. But, you know, what's so special about this? Well, hopefully this is hot enough to show you. I think it will be. <laughs> and you thought you were just seeing a pen video. <laughs> and what, a, what do you know? There's Harvey appearing on the mug. Our six foot puka. Uh, other thing about Harvey was I, I loved the film as a kid and he and Helen Hayes reprised the play on Broadway when I was, was a kid so my mother and I went in to, to see him perform um, the Helen Hayes was not in the film was not in the film version but um, Jesse White was he played as the psychiatric hospital attendant and he was in both the film and the play version and you would know him if you're old enough from the uh he was the maytag repairman in all those commercials for probably 10 years or 20 years that was jesse white anyway we stay uh, after the play we went out to the back to the stage door to see Mr. Stewart and indeed he came out to get in his car and greeted fans and I remember him as being so tall I think he was about 6'3 or 6'4 and uh, I was just too bashful to go up to him at that age and ask for an autograph and I was very upset by the time we got home to New Jersey and uh, my older brothers for whom I'll ever be grateful for the offer, offered to drive me in to the stage door the next night to see him. We didn't do that, but that's a fond memory I have. Anywho, I guess you want to know more about the pens. Well, we'll see. So my grandfather, Kurt, is my father's father, and he's the one who came from Germany and had Haza changed to Haas. I don't know if he did that or the officials at Ellis Island did that. Not really sure. My other grandfather, George Warner, my mother's father, uh, 
provided me after his passing with his desk here. And after he retired from uh, the Navy as an accountant, one of his main hobbies was to research genealogy. And he became a, just showing that little bunny rabbit there, he became a lineage specialist, which is one degree below genealogist. And as a result of that, uh, I learned that my mother's mother's family was distantly related to Boris Karloff of Frankenstein Monsters fame. And he was also the original mummy. And I know there's a strong family resemblance. His real name was William Pratt. And that was my mother's mother's family, the Pratts, from England, where old Boris came from. Now you might ask, why am I mentioning this in a fountain pen video? The reason being, uh, most of you have heard of Franken pens, where you match different pens, maybe a cap from one with the barrel of another, and create a brand new pen. It's called a Franken pen. Well, whenever you think of a Franken pen. Think of me. Okay, so the moment we've all been waiting for. And here is the beauty. I'm filming this at night. Let's see if I can get proper light on this. And you can see some bunny rabbits and moons and here if this will focus in this light you see a bunny rabbit on a ladder looking up at the moon and this all relates to uh, ancient Chinese beliefs that when you look up at the full moon, the dark, what we call seas, like the Sea of Tranquility, but the, the dark, dark Mara look like a bunny rabbit mixing something in a mortar. And in the Chinese folklore, that's usually an elixir for the emperor or for high-ranking Chinese officials, an elixir of immortality. Um, later that was shared with the common folk in China who were able to look at the moon and see Come on, baby. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. Um, we're able to see the same rabbit, or Haas as we now know, um, mixing, uh, preparing tea. So either an elixir of immortality or tea. And I just saw a video, or an article rather, a couple of weeks ago, and I'll link to it below, that they have found just recently some real commonalities between uh, Chinese astrology and the months of the year with those of Mesoamerica, such as uh, the Aztec sun calendar. And one of the months is the rabbit, and the rabbit associated with the full moon. So we have more to learn, I think, about the connection between Mesoamerica and China and where the Mesoamericans might have originally come from. Anyway, I'll link that 
below. All right, so let me sit down and again, this Hong Dian, I'm just, just the feel of it is quality. Uh, unlike the vast majority of many Chinese pens I've held in hand over the last two and a half decades. Uh, as far as my nails are concerned, if you've watched any of my videos on YouTube, pen videos over the last 15 or 20 years, uh, you will know that I've never accepted a gift certificate to a nail salon. Okay, so this has a black nib, which fits perfectly with the coloration. I've briefly shown you the ink window and you'll see the piston filler. And the cap post securely and fairly deeply. I tend not to post caps uh, unless it's a very short pen, but this feels very comfortable and slightly back weighted because of the cap, but certainly manageable. I would tend to use the pen unposted and uh, it's just, just really perfectly balanced. Now I've never filled this pen. This particular one uh, has the ebonite feed that I mentioned. You're not really going to be able to determine the difference uh, in this video, especially since this is a new camera set up at my grandfather's desk and I don't really have the everything down like I do in my office uh, for close-ups and I'm recording this at night not during the day and natural sunlight uh, but I just wanted to give you my my impressions of the pen there are a number of other YouTube videos uh, where you can see close-ups of the nib and, and uh, and better uh, photographs. I'm not attempting to compete with those, just my initial impressions as a longtime importer of Chinese fountain pens. Um, what was I saying? Oh, an ebonite feed rather than a plastic feed. But again, it's my understanding that that's kind of, at least at this point, still hit or miss with Hong Dian pens as to what you will receive. Uh, let me open this desk drawer because... And maybe I didn't put it in here. I guess I didn't. Well, that's helpful. Anyway, the uh, pen comes with a little wrench which enables you, and most people are not going to bother with this, but if several years from now you find that uh, the piston is not operating smoothly, the wrench enables you to, it fits in here, and enables you to remove the piston filler uh, to lubricate it. So that's just a nice little addition and feature, and I wish more fountain pen piston makers, piston fountain pen makers would, would do that. So I happen to have this on my desk. This is um, Mont Blanc. And I love the Mont Blanc bottles because they're very easy to fill the last of the ink because you can just move it from the major part of the bottle to the area that makes it very easy to fill. And I guess I haven't used this for a while. So all I've done with this pen is just uh, cleaned out with, with water. I've never had 
ink touch this pen until this moment. Uh, looking through a loop at the nib, and I'm going off camera for a second. It looks to be very well adjusted right out of the box, so I'm not even going to mess with that. We're going to take our chances. So, pen in nib in bottle, turning the piston. Usually I would do this two or three times to get a full fill with most piston fillers. And here I'm just going to get uh, a little bit to write with. And I got a very little, no, that's enough, that's enough. Put that aside, hopefully I won't spill this all over my grandfather's desk. And a little cleaning of the nib in section. And we have the Hong Dian. And this is, uh, geez, what is this? This is a fine nib. This was uh, sent to me by one of my suppliers, so I didn't even specify the nib size. Um, and Hong Dian N7, obviously for Norman. Uh, and we'll call this the, which I believe on certain websites it's been called the gray rabbit very spell gray both ways very smooth writer I normally go a bit broader than a fine in my personal writing instruments, but this is very nice. Can get a little bit of line variation, but this, well, actually quite a bit now that if you apply a little bit of pressure and no pressure, you can see quite a difference. And again, there are other videos on YouTube I've come across that go into uh, more writing samples than I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm just very impressed with this pen. Uh, again, I think prices are about $30 US. And I'll provide the, the link to Asvine pens below. Uh, although I'm not importing Chinese pens at the moment, uh, as I've downsized from a house to an apartment, uh, I will link to his Amazon store. And I believe it's even free shipping in the US for that price. Uh, but you can follow the link and, and see for yourselves. Oh, what a lovely, and this is very encouraging to me uh, for the direction that China is, is moving in their fountain pen production and the fit and finish and quality. Starting first, in my last video with uh, the Asfine pen that I reviewed. Just a gorgeous pen, and I'll link again to that, both on on Amazon, in, on his store, and uh, also to the review I did. And this uh, homage to me, what can I say?
Now really this is uh, this is exciting and with the current political problems that we're having with uh, the CCP in China and the tensions there I don't know how long we're going to be able to get some of these uh, imports from China and uh, if there will be difficulties with that going forward but if that channel remains open, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with what these new manufacturers are doing. Um, fit and finish quality, writing perfectly right out of the box. Um, again, this is a, a fine nib. And a, a true Western find, I would say. Uh, as opposed to a, a Japanese find, which is like a, a Western extra find. So those are my first impressions. And I highly recommend... This pen and if Hong Dion's other pens are anything like this, it's a great new company. And between Hong Dion and Asfine, who have a close relationship, I'm told. Inexpensive, terrific Chinese fountain pens are making their way west to our shores. Thanks much. See you soon. Just a very quick addendum uh, from filming last night. I just wanted to show you that little Hongdian wrench that comes with a pen should you ever need to uh, unscrew and remove the piston filler for uh, lubrication. And like every other YouTuber these days says, and I never have, but I will this time. Please click the like button. Please click the subscribe button. Please click the panic button. And click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. And I figure if you, if you do all those things, and based on the fact that I at most publish a video once a month, it seems. Um, I should be able to retire from my YouTube income within mm, perhaps 30 or 40 years. So thanks very much for watching.